Subcutaneous ICD. It's gotten uh, some press recently. It'll soon show up in an uh, editorial in Jack. And I'm with Gus Barty, and we are at TCT 2012, University of Washington. You're presenting here on the subcutaneous ICD. Can you define it first and, and just explain what it is? It's an ICD that's a hybrid between an automated uh, external defibrillator and a transvenous defibrillator. It's designed to protect against cardiac arrest and sudden death without incurring all the acute and long-term complications of transvenous leads of which we read so much about today. Now, the reason the audience probably has heard about this is it was recently approved by the FDA, correct? Correct. What's it approved for? It's approved for all indications, current indications for transvenous ICDs with uh, the single contraindication being patients with pre-existing unipolar pacemakers. There are three relative contraindications, um, uh, but that's the only uh, absolute contraindication. The three relative contraindications include number one, patients that require bradycardia pacing because this does not transvenously pace. Number two, patients with monomorphic ventricular tachycardia beneath a rate of 170, although those patients are still at risk of cardiac arrest from ventricular fibrillation, thus the relative contraindication. And number three, patients with demonstrable recurrent monomorphic VT that are pace terminable. Now, in the particular case of this device, how difficult is it to insert? Uh, the surgical procedure is uh, slightly different than a transvenous, but um, those that put the device in repetitively put it in within 25 minutes, skin to skin closure. Uh, it's a highly predictable procedure. It does not require fluoroscopy if one knows where the sternum is, the xiphoid, and the sixth rib, and the anterior axillary line. That's all you need to know. Unless you're dealing with congenital heart disease, dextrocardia, uh, this is an amazingly predictable procedure. There are almost no surprises conceivable. What else are you talking about in your presentation here at TCT? I'm speaking about the anatomy. Uh, some case examples, uh, indications, and the ultra-simplicity of the device. It is designed to be um, uh, easy to use without a lot of fanfare. The programmable options on a transvenous device typically exceed 50 million options. There are only four on the subcutaneous. On the rate at which you want a discriminator for SVT, whether you want post-shock pacing or not, and the actual um, number for the rate discriminator for SVT. Whereas with transvenous systems, uh, the programmers require uh, usually master's degrees in electrical engineering to be able to program or specialized nurses. This does not require uh, anybody other than the physician. So the take-home message is to where this is going to go in uh, it, its, its cubby hole in cardiology? Um, I don't think the current users, there have been approximately 1,200, 1,300 implants worldwide in a small group of users. Current users are now um, uh, using up to 40 to 50 percent of their ICD implants are now this device. Uh, highly, highly dependable detection highly dependable termination of VT and VF. In fact, uh, there is no known reported spontaneous episode of VF that has not been terminated by the device. Wow. Now, Dr. Barty is presenting here, and in uh, Jack Online, you should be able to read the subcutaneous ICD, Should Patients Want One? And this is by Robert G. Hauser. Uh, senior consulting cardiologist at the Minneapolis Heart Institute. So go online to Jack and you can read that article. And with Gus Barney, I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor for CardioSource Interventional News. Thank you. Thank you very much, I